Hello, Lobo fans. Welcome into your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm your host, Robert Portnoy, with the head football coach at New Mexico, Danny Gonzalez. Coach G, Lobos come off a loss in Reno to the Nevada Wolfpack. I, I thought I'd start with this. Uh, I remember you telling us at your press conference last week we had a terrific performance against Hawaii. Let's see how the kids respond after a convincing win. I thought I'd ask about the week of preparation leading up to Nevada. I thought the week of preparation was great. I mean, our, our margin for error is, is so slim. You can't turn the ball over three times and not take it away three times. And we didn't. And so it, they gave, we gave them some momentum, and they built on it. We dug ourselves a hole that we weren't quite able to come out of. Uh, we fought our way back, but we didn't quite make it all the way back. There were three first-half picks. As you looked at the tape, what did you see on those? I thought the first one was a great play by their defensive end. I mean, they showed like they were going to blitz. They drop out kind of like we do sometimes. And he's a 6'5 kid. They got right in the middle. Dylan never saw him. And, and give them credit. They made good play. But we held them to a field goal. Not a big deal. It was 6-0 at that point. Uh, Dylan got hit on the next one, which made the next one go high. And then the third one, he just overthrew. Uh, I mean, that was beating Dylan up. But Dylan's the heart and soul of our, our team, on all, especially on offense. I mean, the voice. So he'll be fine this week. He's got to overcome that. And we almost overcame it in the second half, just not quite enough. Yeah, Dylan Hopkins, the local quarterback, did bounce back with a really nice second half. But two touchdowns and a field goal off of turnovers, that's really hard to overcome. Yeah, 18 points is, is a ton, especially when uh, we had two opportunities to take it away. We caused two fumbles, didn't get either one of them. Uh, the second one was close, but close only counts in horseshoes. So we didn't take it away enough to overcome the 18 points off turnovers. Gosh, the one that Coach is talking about, really, when you look at that replay, Coach, it's a toe just barely on the white that keeps the Lobos from recovering that ball in bounds, right? I wish he would have just stayed on his feet instead of trying to dive on it. But we do teach him to dive on the ball, especially around the pile. So he did the right thing. He was just a couple inches away. What about your team, outside of the turnovers, not moving the ball as well as you would have liked in the first half? Well, we, I mean, we started off the first drive. It was great early, and then we threw the ball uh, through the lateral that we dropped and, and created a long second long. And then from there, it kind of steamrolled. We got behind, and we weren't able to run the ball with the consistency that we wanted to because we were behind 16 and then 24-0. So we had to throw the ball to get back in the game. I thought we ran the ball early on the first two series, good. But when you get behind, you can't take up the time like that. So Nevada had that 24-0 first half advantage. One last thought, um, the quarterback, we had talked about his ability to run. How did you feel about your team defending that? Um, he hit us on a couple runs. I mean, that Jamal Bell, the running back number three, he got a few. but. They didn't drive the ball consistently. I mean, they had two drives that I thought were good. They got field goals out of. Um, we held them to the field goals when they when we got the sudden change on two of the three. But the punt return and the pick six, I mean, th those were 14 points we weren't able to overcome. Okay, let's get into the tape next with Coach Gonzalez. We're back on your Lobo Coaches Show with the head football coach at New Mexico, Danny Gonzalez. Let's get into first half highlights. The Lobos on a chilly night in Reno against the Nevada Wolfpack. You know, here's, here's the first fumble where they miscommunicated. I thought we had a chance to get on it. This, that was the second play of the game. And then third and eight, we got a good look. I thought he got hurt. He must be like Gumby because his knee bounced funny. But we were able to get off the field. Offense started with the first two. I mean, here's the first run of the game, a 12-yard run by Bill. I mean, we had a, a nice hole, did a nice job. We're going to complete a pass right here to DJ which gave us some early momentum. We're moving the ball just like we did in the start of the Hawaii game. And then on the next play, we're gonna cause a, create a big mistake right here. And it's too bad because when Andrew drops this, we have this blocked up pretty well. Instead, it ends up being a 15 yard loss and third and, third and forever, uh, we weren't able to convert. It's a little bit like going back a couple of weeks when it was penalties that took you guys out of a great first drive. This time it was a drop ball. It was a drop ball and then we punt. The defense came out again. I mean, the defense was excited to get on the op opportunity to get on the field. We have an opportunity to uh, cause a fumble here in a second um, on the sideline. I mean, I, our run defense early was really good. I mean, we got off the field again with a three and out and gave our offense the ball. Now Hicks got targeted right here. I mean, I, I'm not a fan of that rule. I say it all the time. I mean, give the guy a 15-yard penalty. I don't think it was intentional, but give him a 15-yard penalty and, and let him play, but that's not the rule. So targeting there, we'll see targeting later on in the game as well. And um, Dylan, in, in terms of this early part of this first quarter, how about his play? Well, he had a couple of throws early that were good. Uh, we missed the Mike linebacker right there on a now screen on third and 10. So we had to punt the ball right back to him. Uh, both both offenses or both defenses had been holding stage. And then right here, we caused a fumble. Christian Ellis was really close. Zach did a nice job of knocking the ball out. 
uh, he was an inch away from, from getting that ball and, and it being ours going the other direction. We're going to get a great look at a replay here, Coach, close up in just a moment. And you can see just how close Christian Ellis was to getting on this football. He clearly recovers it, but it's where his toe is coming up right here when he actually got possession of the ball. Right here, if he just grabbed it without bobbling it, it's our football. But when he finally got possession of it, you're right, his foot was touching out of bounds. So they got, now I didn't like the spot. They put it at third and one. They were able to, to execute this, and then they're going to hit us on a long one here in a second. Uh, we got a nice lick on him. They called this they called this a fumble initially and then changed it to incomplete. We didn't get on it, so it wouldn't have mattered. But then they're able to complete a 50-50 ball, where Zach, I thought, he sat on the route on third and seven. Um, Campbell ran right by him, and they were able to do this. Now we came out there on defense and got a stop and held him to a field goal. Kyler Drake right there, terrific play, just blows it up in the backfield. We did a nice job on short yardage on Saturday. I mean, we were three of they were three of 11 on third down. We were able to get off the field. But every once in a while, I mean, our guys came hard on PAT field goal block right there. We were, we were, we were inches away from blocking one of those, but the kicker did a nice job. He got four field goals on Saturday night. Yeah, he's a weapon, Talton, no question about it. Mountain West field goal leader for a career. This is a good return here by Deuce. I mean, he hit the hole hard. We get out to the 30-yard line, but we can, we can take that. I mean, offense started with decent field position in the first half. We just killed ourselves with some uh, execution penalty, I mean, uh, interceptions. There's a really nice run right here by Andrew Erickson. I mean, we were moving the ball into their, their territory. We were just coming up empty. Andrew Erickson, I think he's sneaky fast, coach. You know, you've got some burners, but uh, Andrew can turn the corner too. He can. He can put his foot in the ground and get vertical. Plus, he's hard to tackle. He's really strong. Another drop pass right here on an opportunity that we had fairly blocked up. Andrew, both Andrews, they just took their eye off the ball a little bit early. And then they were able to stop us right here on third and five. Now we went for it on fourth down. Uh, I thought defensively we were playing good enough, but this was a heck of a play by their defensive end right there to step back and catch it with that short of a, a throw as hard as Dylan threw it. Uh, now we got him on the ground. I thought the defense did a great job on sudden change. We came out, got him into a third down, and we get off the field. I mean, the, the aggressiveness right here was great. The thing that you guys did early in this game, Coach, you think of the, the long pass play, force a field goal. The first pick, force a field goal. How about Jamarius Lewis too, Coach? Uh, he's barely, I mean, you know, confidence is an amazing thing. And when you can get confidence, you can do some special things. I thought that was a nice play by Marvin Covington right there. Jamarius Lewis was in good position as a free safety. And then we held him to a field goal on the sudden change, which is good. I mean, it's only 6-0 at this point. Was the wind a factor in this game, Coach? No, I mean, it, the, the weather was a little bit chilly, but it wasn't a factor. Here's Dylan's uh, first interception, our second interception right here after the, that series that led to a pick six. He got, uh, the ball was a little bit high, he overthrew it. If, if, uh, if he connects on this ball right there, Caleb Medford's gonna go for a long way. I mean, that was the most disappointing in the three interceptions. One would have been a first down, and then the other two were gonna be pretty big plays. And the, the latter two, we'll see the other one, both same slant to the same guy, Medford. He just overthrew him a little bit. One he got hit, and the other one, that, the first one right there on the pick six, just went off target. Continue to see good play from Ryan Davis from the slot too, Coach. We did, and, and then we had a couple deep shots. One to Deuce, a couple to Caleb that we just weren't able to connect on. Uh, if we could connect on those, it'd be game changers right here. Give Nevada credit right there, their Mike linebacker. Uh, he did a really nice job of getting out there on the on the, eight, the B swing and got him on the ground. There's a nice run by Brendan Lewis right there on the zone read. Uh, this was the, the, the longest drive they had of the night, 81 yards. They were able to get down in, into our territory. Uh, he does a nice job though. We did, a, we did a, a poor job early of making sure he handed the ball off. We were able to do it later and then he got banged up with the ankle roll. And I was impressed with the way that their backup quarterback played and we talked about what a weapon Talton is. Uh, he, he's got deep range too. He does. They had two sustained drives on offense. Um, both of them ended up in field goals. One was 50 yards, one was 81 yards, and, and they got three points out of them. I got a really nice play right here by Jeremiah Hickson. Once again, we're moving the ball, and then we're gonna turn it over again. And like I said, our margin for error right now is so slight, we just can't turn the ball over if we're not gonna take it away as many times. And here it is, this one sails, and he did get hit on that one. He did, he got hit, right as the ball, it caused the ball to float a little bit, and it went over Caleb's head. Uh, now we come out, we get the, they get the ball in the 24 yard line, we get him into a third and three. They're able to run the ball for a first down, which this was disappointing because up up top there, uh, they had a hold of Marvin Covington's face mask. We sent him to the league. I haven't heard back yet. But 
a third and 16 as opposed to the third and three right there is going to be a significant difference. I mean, they got the ball at the 24 yard line. They were able to put it in the end zone and get the two point conversion, which put us in the 24 nothing hole. What happens when you send something into the league like that? If they see it and they acknowledge it, you just get, I'm sorry, we missed it. Yes, I'm, I'm not a big fan of doing that. Uh, I thought there was some stuff in there that they needed to see, so we sent some stuff in this week, but uh, there's, there's nothing you can do. The game's already over. Nice run again right there by Brendan Lewis. As we come up to the, now we get off the field here. I mean, it's 24-0 uh, right there. A nice job by Christian Ellis staying over the top. We got him to punt the ball right back to us. We're going to run it a couple times to get out of the half so that we can get in the end zone. The great thing on the sideline is nobody thought the game was over. I mean, we had spotted them 24 points. Everybody had full confidence on our sideline that we could come out there and get right back in the football game. And we'll see in the second half. We get some early momentum. We just weren't able to sustain it. And I think that these plays here at the end of the half, uh, obviously, this gives you a feeling for the second half, hey, we can go do something. Yeah, you know, we had moved the ball early in the first half. We had moved it, uh, by, we had some big plays. We just stumped, stumped ourselves with the three interceptions, and we can't do that. I mean, we, we took the clock down right there. I mean, they had 171 yards of total offense. We had given them three extra possessions. We actually were on the field 11 times on defense, which is almost unprecedented for a half. Uh, I thought our guys did a good job of, of holding the sudden changes to minimizing the points. We gave them the ball to the 24-yard line, had a chance to get off the field. They were able to get a, a touchdown off of the one. Like I said, I thought there was a holding penalty. But we dug ourselves a hole, and now we're going to go into halftime, make some adjustments, and see if we can get out of it. Got a chance to give Dampier a little work there at the end of the half, and uh, nice to see Deuce Jones make a grab there at the end of the he half. He did. Well. Uh, Deuce, I mean, he's gotten better and better each week. Uh, he had an opportunity of the deep shot. we got to keep connecting between him and Caleb. They can take it over the top. we just got to connect on a few of them. Okay, we come back with second half highlights. The Lobos will get it going in the third quarter. That's next with Coach Gonzalez. Welcome back into your Lobo Coaches Show. It's time for second half highlights. New Mexico and Nevada from Reno. I thought the offense came out. I mean, we get a we get a false start penalty on the very first play, and I started to think to myself, "Great, here we go." But we marched the ball right down the field. Uh, we're going to get three points out of it, and I thought that was a huge one. We gained, we took more than half of it back on the first play with the throw to Caleb and gave Dylan a little bit of confidence. There's a nice run right there by Bill. We actually ran the ball okay. We just couldn't run it very much, and when you can't run it very much because of where you are on the position of the field, uh, it makes it pretty tough for especially what we do on offense. Andrew Henry's able to turn the corner there. Do you think sometimes you get down a couple of scores that maybe that you're compelled to feel like you can't run it as often when maybe that's not the case? Uh, sometimes. Now, we were in a pretty big hole. 24 points is a lot of points. And once we got it back to 24-10, uh, if we could have got one out there and got another three not on defense, I mean, you can run your normal offense. 14 points with, with a full quarter and a half to go, it's no big deal. Uh, they did a nice job right here, but Luke comes out and, and bangs us away. We get 24-3 lead. We cut it to three touchdowns, and let's go out on, on defense and get a stop. Driz Wicky nails a 47-yarder, a career long, a beauty. Hit it right down the pipe and did a nice job. I think our, our kickoff team has really, I mean, we, we've got him inside the 25 several times this year. Um, the coverage has been great. There's a great tackle by Josh Williamson right there. I mean, those guys are doing a good job. And then we come out on defense with the first stop. They get a first down, and then we're going to go three, three more plays and get off the field. This is setting you up perfectly to get right back in the football game. And because you're able to get off the field here this time, and that is just a terrific play there on second and four, and you're going to stone them on third and short right here, too. Exactly. I thought Derek Moore did a great job on that previous play. Uh, we did a better job in the second half of forcing the quarterback to hand the ball off into our inside zone guys. Uh, and that was a, a nice throw right here by Dylan Hopkins to Trace Bruckler, and Trace made a guy miss. We're getting some positive territory. And then we're going to hit, this is exactly the same uh, throw that Dylan had on the first series that he overthrew Jeremiah a little bit. He put this one right on the money and a touchdown, just like I think the other one would have been. 59 yards to Hickson right there. And uh, I remember saying, we've got a ball game. You guys are right back in it. Right back in it. Now this one I heard right here, that a third down, Derek Moore, he actually came and chased the quarterback, which we didn't need him to do. He was supposed to fit on his side. It popped for a 31-yard run. And then we're going to miss a tackle uh, here on a second and 10, where if we make this tackle, it's going to be third and four. And like I said, we've been really good on third and four. Marvin just missed. Delvin Campbell's a big young man. Uh, was able to get 28 yards. And they're going to get down here in field goal position. And they're going to be able to kick a field goal to, to not eliminate the game, put it back at 27 to 10. 
we're able to get off the field. I mean, they get inside the 10 yard line with a first and goal. We're able to stop them and hold them to a field goal. <laughs> Couple of things. Uh, I thought Dimitri Johnson played a terrific game and he's able to grab two guys at once. And what about the targeting here? Well, they, I mean, he got him. He got him on the helmet. This is one of those things. I mean, he wasn't intentionally trying to get him. Uh, their helmets just collided as Alec drove, dove in. I wish it would be a 15 yard penalty and let the young man keep playing, but that's not the rule. And so we'll be without Alec for the first half next week. I thought our guys were playing aggressive as can be. I mean, we did a nice job of, of inside the 10 yard line of holding them to field goals, but we got to keep them from getting down there when you're down 27, 24 to 10. But at 27 to 10, it hurt right now when the offense came out and went three and out. This series of downs, the costly one. Now here, I think Aaron does a great job this low bouncer all the way back to the 32. What happened on the coverage here? Couple of assignment mistakes on the coverage right there. I mean, there's a nice block and I thought it was a blindside block at the, during the game, it wasn't. Uh, our deep snapper, uh, for some reason, he was looking for the football. He's not supposed to look for the football. If he would just run down there and run the returner, the returner probably doesn't even pick it up. Now they started at the 32 yard line. I thought that was a very questionable call. I mean, they're hand fighting right here. You see Mars hands on him, takes him off. They both push off. He swipes at it. I mean, we, we turned it in. I'll wait and see what they say, because uh, they're allowed to hand fight. If we could have got off the field right there at third and 11 and, and they kick another field goal at 30 to 10, you still got a great opportunity. 34, we, we, all the ground that we had made up, we gave it right back. And it's too bad because we make a one possession game uh, with the, or a chance to a one possession game with a two point conversion there. Now this one, I thought Marvin was holding. I mean, that, that one, okay, they called that one. It was too bad they called the first one because third and 11, we got off the field with a field goal attempt. It might've been a little bit different in the game. I always wonder about these uh, goal to go scenarios where a, a player coming from behind, if he sees a teammate, is in front of the ball carrier because when he dives from behind, he's pushing the ball carrier toward yeah. the line. We teach him, grab a hold and pull back. Don't push forward. And uh, so we were able to watch that in meetings yesterday to go over that. It happened on that, and it also happened on a third down earlier in the game. That was a play that Caleb Medford could have made right there. I know you got the uh, pass interference, but that one was right on point. It was, and then that was a great grab right there by DJ. So we move the ball down right once again. We put it in the end zone. 24 to our 34, we're gonna go for two here in a minute, 34 to 18 to make it a 16.2 possession game. Nice run by uh, Devin. Both the touchdown runs were really nice runs by Devin right there. Now we get off on defense, we get him into a third and six. Uh, I thought that this, this was probably my fault. We probably should have been a little bit more aggressive on this third down. Uh, I thought they were gonna try and run it because they'd had some success. They threw it, we had a guy that was just a step late get inside of it. We're gonna get him into a third and, a third and long here in a minute. and. Dimitri and uh, Mahalis do a great job of getting to the quarterback and we forced them to pump, but they were able to take another two minutes and 50 seconds off the clock when we didn't get off the off the field on that first third down. So you would have sent another guy or two on that first third down? Uh, we, we should have probably blitzed them. I mean, we were playing a man coverage to cover that route. We were just a little bit late getting to it and then they were able to convert the first down. Did a nice job right here. I mean, Dylan were backed up. They did a nice job punting the ball. They got us backed up. But Dylan did a great job of getting us right out of the end zone, and DJ made a couple really big catches on Saturday night. You're coming out offense. The, the offense get off the goal line offense has been really good on several occasions this year. It has, and right there it was really necessary, especially trying to, we need two touchdowns in the final three minutes. A great catch right there by DJ. It's too bad that they were able to punch this ball out. Uh, he was trying to get a few extra yards. Now they had called pass interference, so we're going to keep the football, or it would have been our first fourth turnover of the night. And there's the hand fighting. We've been talking about the whole show, Coach. That ball's in the air. They're still engaged. There was no, I just feel like sometimes I'm not sure exactly when or where that flag's gonna come. I agree. They can call, it's just like inside holding. They can call it anytime they want. Uh, make, make some of those things legal. Now in the NFL, they don't let you touch them past five yards. So I'm, I'm guessing we're headed that way in college. Great play right there by Andrew Erickson. I mean, they were pulling the ball, hang on to it, get down. And then if we, I mean, this is a, a good throw right here. Caleb got pinned at the line of scrimmage. Uh, they called the illegal hands to the face. There was actually two of them. They did it to Caleb and they did it inside. Great run here by Andrew Henry. We got down to the three yard line. We're gonna put the ball in with, uh, with Bill right here. It's a nice cut. If we can get the two point conversion right here, we'll have a minute to go with an onside kick and a chance. Dylan just, the ball sailed on him a little bit and 10 point lead now with a minute to go. I thought you might come back with the zone read on the two point because it had been so effective with Devin uh, the previous possession when you scored the touchdown. You know, we had a, I mean, we had Jeremiah right there wide open. I mean, Coach B made a really good call. They were just able to, uh, he, the ball sailed on him a little bit. And unfortunately uh, it made it a two possession ball game and we just didn't have enough time anymore. And, and the pressure probably created the ball sailing. It did. I mean, he, the guy was chasing him a little bit, uh, but uh, Dylan, I mean, after the game, that's a, that's a throw that Dylan feels he's got to make. and. Uh, we, us losing that game was not Dylan's fault. 
Dylan had a couple bad throws, but there was plenty of opportunities for other guys to make plays. Dylan just feels the pressure because he's the quarterback. And he felt bad after the game. He's like, Coach, I, I, I screwed this time. I'm like, Dylan, you didn't. We wouldn't have had no chance to get back in the game if you didn't play in the second half the way you did. So Dylan will come back. He'll bounce back strong this week against UNLV. Uh, disappointing because I think our team expected to win. Our fan base expected to win. We turned the ball over three times, and that was the difference in the game. None of us has any doubt that Dylan will come back. He absolutely will. And that's a sign of a leader. Take responsibility. Okay, on the other side, we wrap up the loss in Reno, and then the Lobos hosting UNLV. That's next. We're back to wrap up your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm Robert Portnoy with the head football coach at UNM, Danny Gonzalez. Coach G, a final takeaway from the loss in Reno. I thought our kids fought hard until the very end. I mean, we had a chance to make it a one-possession game, didn't execute. We're just, we can't turn the ball over three times and not take it away three times. The 18 points off turnovers, there's not very many teams in this country that can overcome that, and we weren't able to. UNLV is up next. The Lobos hosting the Rebs at University Stadium, 4 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Coach, what have you seen on tape from a resurgent Rebel team? I think Coach Odom's done a really good job. Uh, they're playing at a high level. They had a chance against the uh, Fresno State on Saturday night. They dropped a couple passes in the end zone that would have tied the game. Uh, give Fresno credit. They made enough plays. They have they're bowl eligible at six and two. Uh, we're excited to have the opportunity. I really think our league is is comparable from top to bottom. So the next four games, we're gonna have to take them one at a time and go out there without making mistakes to give ourselves a chance. They played Fresno so tough. I know that speaks volumes. You thought going into the year Fresno was going to be one of the top-tier teams. I did, and they did a nice job. All right, Coach Gonzalez, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck against the Rebels. Thanks, Robert. All right, for Lobo Head Football Coach Danny Gonzalez, our director, Chase Christensen, I'm Robert Portnoy. We'll see you at University Stadium on Saturday at 4. So long, and go Lobos.